Hi there, this is Aaron. Today is Sunday the 13th of April and it's day 45 on the allotment. Um, well, today I had an awful lot to get done because I didn't get a chance to get down here yesterday. And so I've just really concentrated on working and I'm talking to you at the end of the day. Um, but before I came here this morning, I saw something quite amazing on my chilli plants. So uh, if I can show you that now. Well, we've got the early morning sun here, but uh, I hope you can see that uh, the chilies are coming on. Some of them are starting to get true leaves now. Now, the other thing is that they are still germinating. There is a new chilli coming through here of the lemon drops. And there's even a new chilli here of the scotch bonnet coming through. So even a month later, they are still germinating, which is great news. And then here, I don't know if you can see this. That's no longer a flower. That is starting to be a chili forming. I've got chilies coming. It looks to me as if I've actually got chilies on the way, which would be absolutely amazing if I could have chilies on the way you know, sort of before summer. So uh, remember, those are last year's plants. So uh, they've been going for almost a year now. Anyway, um, the main focus of today was to get my potatoes planted, the rest of my potatoes. So uh, I started off a little earlier um, with the international kidney. This is a technique that I've uh, developed. I'm planting out my international kidney. I managed to get hold of three of the 120 litre bags of compost from home base. Um, looking at the coir, I mean, it was just going to take so much of it, and it takes a while to, to, to make up and store, so this was much more economical. Uh, I, I'm not sure if you know or not, but I do try and do things with a zero carbon footprint, but in this case, a car was needed uh, to bring it all over to uh, hopefully make things easier. So what I'm doing is I'm emptying out the compost into the wheelbarrow. Um, it was actually quite difficult to keep the handles of um, the, the green bag open. So what I've done is I've hooked the, the handles of the green bag over the wheelbarrow to make it much easier to shovel the compost in. So then uh, what I'm doing is I'm putting in a layer of compost and on top of that I'm putting in some leaf mould. Um, I managed to get hold of a big mound of leaf mould so we're putting that in the bag as well. Then what I'm doing is I'm putting in fish blood and bone and then some chicken manure. Then I'm putting in two international kidney seed potatoes, more compost, another layer of leaf mould, more fish blood and bone, more chicken manure, and then two more seed potatoes and then more compost on top. So that uh, hopefully what we have is lots of nice things for the potatoes to grow into. What I have now is all four of my international kidney bags planted out. Uh, they are the front two and behind them, the middle and left, uh, are all international kidney. Now, all of them have four seed potatoes in, except for the front middle one, which has two seed potatoes because that's all I have left. But it does mean that they have more room to grow in. So, international kidney planted and done. Well, it felt great to get the international kidney in, and then I carried on exactly the same uh, with the um, Golden Wonder. And uh, I did actually manage to get all my potatoes planted in the end. Well, there is a lot of potatoes there. <laughs> at the front, we have Golden Wonder. Behind that, the international kidney, and behind that, at the back, we have the Anya. So we've got seven bags of Anya, four bags of the International Kidney, and eight bags of Golden Wonder. I planted the Golden Wonder the same as the others, so I carried on using four seed potatoes in each bag, um, except for the one sticking out at the left at the front there, which has three potatoes in it. Um, also, those two at the left at the front, um, I ran out of multi-purpose compost, and so they've got a mixture of multi-purpose, coir, leaf mould as well as the fish blood and bone and chicken manure. 
So I reckon I used all 360 litres plus 50 litres of coir as well, which if you add that to the previous 160 litres of coir is 570 litres of compost, which is an awful lot. Um, planting potatoes in this way is a significant investment and it isn't finished because I've still got to muddy everything up so I'm going to need more compost. But there they all are. <laughs> My potatoes for the season are all planted. Well, as a result of that, um, I've made up some more coir. Um, but uh, Monty Don was talking on Gardener's World and it gave me an idea. So I've tried something new here. Let's, uh, let me show you. I'm just making up another um, batch of coir. And it is coir because Monty Don said it was coir, and obviously he must be right. So uh, it's good to finally settle that because coir just sounded so pretentious if you're English. I gather that it is an American pronunciation, so I guess, you know, on the other side of the pond it is correct. But uh, over here I think coir is much better. Anyway, um, Monty was also um, talking about the benefits of leaf mould and how it actually mixes with coir. So what I've done is I've put a brick of coir in. I've also put some leaf mould in. Um, I'm about to add the fertiliser and the Epsom salts. And we'll see what kind of uh, a brew this one makes up. Whether that's going to be the magic mix, I don't know. But uh, I thought it was worth a try. So uh, I'll let you know how I get on with using that mix. Of course, if anybody looks at that and just goes, oh my God, what have you done? Um, please do let me know, and I'm probably looking at you on that, Kay, because you, you are <laughs> the best conscience I've got uh, with gardening. Anyway, um, because we're talking at the end of the day, um, I can't really uh, show you what I'm going to do, but uh, let's take a look around the plot and see where we are with everything. Let's start off in the greenhouse with my leeks, and I'm very, very pleased with how they're growing. Um, there was a suggestion that there may be a little bit of moss growing on top, which I think is a ventilation issue. Um, it can't be a sun issue because sun streams through here. But uh, they're all growing, they're all very straight. I'm, by the looks of things, going to have an awful lot of leeks to um, plant out. I was talking to my wife earlier about bringing my chilli plants down and uh, there is my um, little thermometer there. Now it showed that the lowest temperature we'd had in the last week was two degrees and the highest temperature we'd got in this greenhouse was 46 degrees so chilies will love 46 degrees but I don't think they're gonna like two degrees so uh, I've still got to wait a little while before I can bring them down. My peas now are well underway and they're ready for getting planted out. I'm very pleased with these and how they've done. Same with my other peas. Uh, there's one that hasn't come up but uh, everything else is really wanting to get out there, so in the next week or so I need to plant these out. These are going to be allegedly <laughs> my champion leeks. Um, I've got two, four, six, seven in there, and then I've got another two, four, six, eight in there. We shall see. Um, the Lola Rosso that I uh, planted out, that's looking absolutely gorgeous. I'm really, really pleased with that. Well, one of my broad beans is doing absolutely magnificently. There's another couple coming through, but the others haven't yet. So uh, I guess I've just got to be patient with those. Onions I really, really wanted to get planted out, but I think I'm going to run out of light today. And so carry on and uh, get those uh, planted next week. Um, these are my other onions that I planted out a couple of weeks later and they're coming through as well, so great news there. All of my brassicas want planting on. I cannot leave this another week. I think I'm going to run out of light today, but I needed to get the potatoes in. But yes, this is my next job, to get some brassicas planted out. Well, you can see at the back the cucumbers are coming through. There's one that's a little bit lagging behind the other and there's one that may not do anything. Um, the celery is coming through and that's an amazing thing for me because I didn't think sort of I'd get anywhere close to maybe having a chance at celery but uh, looking forward to trying to uh, cultivate that and even Brussels sprouts coming through so uh, feeling really good about everything that's in the greenhouse. That is a runner bean that's coming through and that's my first runner bean that I've seen for the year. 
So I'm very excited about that fella. These are my other runner beans and there's actually a sign of a few things happening here as well. So uh, hopefully I'll get a couple of runner bean plants on the go and get some lovely runner beans. Coming outside now and my strawberries look as if they're really going for it. There's new growth on all of these strawberries. I'm very, very pleased. Well, I need to give the rest of this bed some attention. I put some cardboard down on it to uh, keep the weeds down in the meantime. But uh, the, the broad beans, look at them. I mean, they're really doing well. There is some weeding to be done there and I need to get stuck into that. That's very bad of me not to have got that done. But uh, in flower, strong, tall. Some of the uh, flowers are starting to come off now and I think what that means is when they come off, I'll get some broad beans. So uh, very excited by that and uh, loving the colour that they're giving. That, uh, that pink tint I wasn't expecting, I didn't know about and uh, I'm really pleased by them. They've been lovely and I've really enjoyed watching them grow. And down here everything is significantly less yellow. It's the evening sun now and so it's probably not showing them off properly but uh, there is so little yellow on this garlic now and these onions that uh, definitely that was the right thing to do and Chris I cannot thank you enough for, and everybody else for suggesting Epsom salts. Thank you. Same story with my onions. And these three here, a couple of people have mentioned, these are actually elephant garlic and uh, they're going great guns. Um, I've got red onions and white onions here and uh, you can see actually which are the red onions and which are the white onions. So uh, I'm hopeful that uh, some of these will go through and actually give me some onions as early as I can. New life and new growth continues on the white currant. I'm getting very excited about this white currant now. That looks like a really strong plant. The red currant has also got really nice new growth on it as well. Um, I'm really, really pleased with that. This is actually the one I was looking forward to the most um, because I love red currants. And look at this. Cheeky is starting to get dwarfed again by the raspberries. Now, he wasn't dwarfed by them when I first put him on last year. So these are growing quicker than they did last year. And I'm convinced there's more of them. So uh, I'm hopeful that uh, um, I'm gonna get a good crop of raspberries this year. Every time I look at this rhubarb plant, it just seems to get more impressive and bigger. This is a triffid waiting to take off. Yes, I know I've got to get in and do some weeding. I'm hoping that as he grows up, he'll sort of um, crowd out all the weeds and help me a little bit. Um, but I know I need to get in there. And uh, that makes me really, really happy to see that growing. I've given it a good water. Oh, thank you, by the way, to uh, Blue Star Dave for your help and advice on uh, my, my rhubarb. Thanks for that. It's always good to uh, hear advice from somebody who really knows what they're doing like you do and uh, I will always listen. Thank you very much. Of course what didn't get done today with all the planting of potatoes and you can see them all over there is more digging. Um, I know I've got to finish this leak bed off. I know I've got to get started on the brassica bed. I think that's going to be a task for next week. Well, thank you for joining me for a walk around my plot. Um, <laughs> I feel really, really pleased that I've got the potatoes in for the year. That was starting to uh, hang around my neck like an albatross. And then I saw um, Chris on uh, the, uh, the allotment shed yeah, saying, yeah, definitely get uh, your golden wonder in right now. So, right, okay, got it done. I feel really pleased about that. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Slightly different format to, uh, to usual, but uh, I will see you next time on the allotment. Goodbye.